everyone, I'm PJ from Princess Craft RV. Today I'm going to show you around the Vintage Cruiser 23 RSS. This is one of my favorite vintage cruiser models because it has the walk around queen bed, a nice dinette in the back, and a sofa on the side. One of the things you notice right off the bat, well of course it's called a vintage cruiser, so it's got that retro look. They make it in three different exteriors. This is the woody version, so got that nice little wood panel look going down the side. They also make it in a turquoise and a red. So if you're one of those people that loves color, you need to check that out. Now most of the vintage versions have the red interior. We'll talk a little more about that when we go inside. Now this checks a lot of boxes for people because it is only 26 feet long and that includes the tongue and it weighs around 4,000 pounds dry. Amazing. That can be towed by an awful lot of vehicles. It's a lot of space inside. It does have a slide out, but it's not that big. So no worries there. You've got a nice awning on the outside. I mean, check out the moon hubcaps. So cool. Let's go inside and check out what that looks like. Come on, let's get started. Walking in here, first thing I think of is it feels like a cabin. Next thing I think of, it's retro. I don't know. It's a mix of both. So let's start right here in the dinette that of course goes down into a sleeping area as well. And while it doesn't look like a huge dinette, it's very comfortable for poor people and it's six feet long. So this is not just for children. It's 38 inches wide, so it's a nice adult sleeping space. The cushions are rounded on the edge and that gives it a easy in and out with the roundness on the table and the roundness on the cushion. You just slide right in. I just really enjoy the feel of the red and white. You've got the trim on the table. Yeah, just a, a really nice setup to give you that retro look and it feels very warm, very cozy. I really like the fact that we have two windows right here, another window here and one behind me. So windows pretty much all the way around. And as you can tell, there's a nice breeze that can come in here. You do have a vent right here on the ceiling above you. And if you wanted to, that could be replaced with a high powered fan. And that is gonna create that breeze in here. It's not standard, but it could be changed out at the dealer. A lot of things in this trailer, by the way, are options. Now, I'm not gonna work really hard to point them all out because almost every vintage that you'll see will have all the features I'm gonna show you. But as I always say, if there's something important to you, you'll wanna check with that dealer to be sure that trailer has it. All right, so the table is freestanding. It could also go outside. I am a big fan of having an open seating area if the table isn't something I need. So the table can move around, it can fold up, you could leave it at home, but in here, it's a nice seating area. If you need this for sleeping, of course, you'll need that to make the bed. It drops right down here on the ledge, scoot these cushions over, and you're ready to go. They've got really nice lighting here. I think that's one of my favorite things is that they've taken those small touches, that and maybe the cords around the edge of these in a different color, just little things to make it feel finished. I want to show you some things on the other side because this is up against the wall, but on the other side, if you pull this cushion out, you will see, there you go that there is an open space there for storage underneath that countertop. So a countertop in the back, always useful, but the open storage, a real plus. And yes, there's storage under the seating. In this one right here, there's storage in the back, not in the front, there's some equipment there, but on the one next to the door, it is all open and ready to store all those extra things that you just might need on your trip. Let's look across to the other side of the door. At the end of the cabinet, you have the uh, mount for the TV. You can fit a 19 inch TV here, and that is an option to get from the factory, but a lot of people would prefer to do it themselves. So uh, that can go right here with, of course, all the connections at the top. You see, this is gonna say that it is a King control for Wi-Fi. It is pre-wired 
for that Wi-Fi extender. It is not included in the camper, but it's great to have it pre-wired if it's something that you want. Now down below, you will have the monitor panels for all the tanks. There's 27 gallons of fresh, 33 gray, and 33 black. You'll also be able to see your battery levels and underneath all the different light switches. The switches for the water pump, one switch is for the gas water heater, and of course the other one's for the electric. So two options there to heat your water. Now I do wanna point out that along with the switch to turn on the overhead lights, you do have this little blue light right here under the counter. A little hard to see, but it's a great night light, and that switch is here on the panel as well. Down below, the switch for the slide out, and of course the switch for the power awning. Really nice to have all of those features electric right here by the door. A little bit of a cubby underneath. Now it's only about three or four inches deep, but that would be great for setting down your keys, your cell phone, whatever you need right there. And coming around here, um, you can see that light underneath this. These white Formica countertops just set off the colors in here, and I love the red trim on them. The trim on these countertops is always gonna match the color inside the camper. So let's talk about that for just a minute. You can have the turquoise interior or the red. Just as you would assume, everything that you see here that's red would be this nice bright turquoise, and of course, the turquoise stripe on the outside. Now, if you go for a red exterior or a turquoise exterior, that's not considered the woody package. The woody package is the only one that has this nice knotty pine on the walls. So if you like the cabin feel in this, you'll wanna look for the woody interior. All right, if you've got the turquoise or the red on the outside and inside, you're gonna have a creamy wallboard here, blends nicely, it just doesn't quite have that cabin feel to it. So check that out. You know, this is all about the look and feel of the interior and exterior. So pick the one that you like the most. Coming around, my favorite drawers, of course. You've got two drawers right here. This top one is a little deceptive. It's only about that long. It's three or four inches deep, but you don't want to waste that space. So you've got a small drawer there and then a longer one here. You can see I've got my tape measure and my notes in there. And again, about three to four inches deep on each of those. Over here, cabinet space. And this cabinet goes all the way back. Uh, it is split in half. It is not adjustable, but a really nice space for pantry items. And up top, it's completely open. So here is where you'd put things that are tall. Of course, if you wanted to put some shelves in here, you could easily do it. And I really like, not only do you have a light right on top in this soffit lighting here, but you have a light right above the sink. So that's going to light up your countertop, if you're doing dishes, you don't have to light up the entire place. You can just light this right here. Now they put this nice rectangular farmhouse style sink in here. It's pretty deep. This one is probably eight inches deep. It is the brushed aluminum look. It's got the high arch faucet and a cutting board for a cover. Now I always recommend to people, you flip that over, use the back side of it for your cutting board. And that way, if you get marks on it, it's not gonna show. Clean it up, flip it back over, and you've got a nice sink cover. Moving on, glass top on the three burner stove. So again, that can be countertop whenever you need it. It just folds right back, and you've got the iron uh, grate right on top for your three burners. Now this lights up as well, and you turn it on and off right there. Very easy to do if you don't like the blue lights, but again, kind of a nice feature. Now this is an oven. Yeah, it's a small one, but it's great for pizzas. It can bake whatever you need. You just might want to find a little bit smaller pan, but how nice to have an oven. I know we've got biscuit and gravy fans out there, and if you want that for breakfast, you got it right there microwave right above it, a nice hood vent that's going to have the light and the fan, so you're good to go. Now, right above me is going to be the 13.5 AC. Again, it's an option, but 
almost every vintage cruiser is going to have that, right? And across the six cubic foot refrigerator. Now, this refrigerator is going to be the standard uh, gas electric and it's got some nice shelves, some good uh, freezer space up there, two crisper drawers. I mean, it's plenty uh, for this size camper and they've added a drawer underneath. So you've really got storage all over this kitchen. Real quickly, two more storage cubbies right here above the sofa. Now this sofa, I measured it, it is four foot four inches long. So this is a child's sleeping area. It does lift up and fold out into a bed if you wanna use that. Now, if you don't need that extra sleeping, it is a super comfy sofa and that TV is going to swivel around so you can see it from the sofa really easily. I love this open space. The slide out is only about two feet deep. It's not very big, but it's enough to open up this living area. It's really a nice cabiny feel in here. So if that's interest to you, check out the 23 RSS. Walk-through bathrooms are really nice because one person can be taking a shower and the other person can be using the lavatory or the commode. You've got two separate spaces. I think that's a super plus. So I want to point out the roundedness here because it just kind of flows into the next space. Right here, you've got the toilet area and look at the counter space here. With that counter space, you could have storage underneath a few things out on the counter, and you've got a cupboard under the sink. So let's take a quick look there. Now you're gonna have to work around the drain in the sink like you usually do under the bathroom sink, but still plenty of space under there for storage. And you've got the medicine cabinet up above and it's got two shelves. Of course, they're three inches deep. So a lot of your bathroom items can go right here. I think I would even use a little space on the top to set things that I wanted to just grab really easily. So you do have a power fan in the bathroom, so that's going to help move some of the air in the center of the camper. When the door closes, there's about three or four inches at the top of the door, so it's going to pull from the main cabin as well. All right, again, it's a little bit of a tight space, but very workable. Let's look on the other side. The front and the back of this camper are curved, but in the center here, it's six foot 11. That's huge. My five foot, that feels like a really tall ceiling. Now you're gonna lose a little bit of that stepping into the shower. You step up just a bit, but you're still gonna be way over six foot in the shower. You've got the skylight in the middle and this nice roll out magnet door. So one piece shower surround here, don't have to worry about the cracks on the side, the leaking, no problems there. It's just very usable, very workable. And the best part is you can open the bathroom door and lock it into place right here so that this door blocks off the entire front of the camper. You don't have to find a very small place to dry off and put your clothes on. You've got the entire bedroom area. So another nice feature, you can use this door to virtually split this camper in half. Again, this curved wall makes it really easy to walk around the corner and gives it an easy flow. Walking in here, you can see the panel right here for a television if you wanted to add that to the bedroom. And windows on both sides, vent at the top for great ventilation. This is a queen bed, but they did cut it a bit short. It's an RV queen, 60 by 74. Nice reading lights right here. And of course they come on and off with just a touch. You've got the blue and if you hold it, you've got the white. Storage at the top. And this space runs all the way across. There's no segments here. And that may be helpful if you've got something long you wanna fit into this cabinet. Um, it's about a foot deep, but of course it angles from the bottom to the top here. So it's kind of a triangle shaped cabinet on the inside. Now the hanging spot right here, hanging bar at the top, of course you could put shelves in there, use it however you need it. And then a little bit of a bedside table right here in front of it, maybe 10 inches of a bedside table there. You know, you gotta point out the nice retro bedspread 
and the cool pillow shams that are included with the camper just gives it a super nice look. And this cabinetry is just the same on the other side. If this wraparound storage is not enough, there's more right underneath the bed. Let's take a look. Man, that opens really easily. Let's get this out of the way so you can see. Underneath this uh, covered panel is going to be your spare tire, so you don't have to go crawling underneath your trailer in the middle of the night. It's right here. And on the left side, of course, that 27-gallon uh, freshwater tank. I like having that inside because if you're camping, it happens to freeze outside. This is going to stay warm with the furnace. That's nice. All right, this drops just right back down. And... I think I've shown you all the basics here on the inside. So let's head outside and take a look out there. Coming out of the Vintage Cruiser, the outside is just as fun as the inside. Again, with this nice wood strip on it. If it's turquoise or red, this is the piece that's gonna have the color on it. And the hubcaps, I mean, really, they're just Give it that little pizzazz. You do have the Goodyear tires on them. Nice long awning. It is electric with the light on it. Over here, let's take a look at this storage. This storage goes all the way through and it does get a little narrower on the other side, but it is separate from what's under the bed. So you get two separate storage spaces. I know in some trailers like this, they're combined. So this cover, is showing the, the plug-in for the portable solar panel. If you wanted to keep these batteries charged, just plug in right here, put that solar panel in the sun. And you know, if I was you, I'd try to park in the shade. You already knew that, right? All right, coming around to the front. Two five gallon propane tanks and an electric jack. The electric jack is an option, but I've never seen a vintage cruiser without it. So probably included in whatever you're looking at. Diamond plate on the front, that's gonna be the nice rock guard, but this is a good place to talk to you about the fiberglass exterior because one of the great things about this trailer is that this roof is one piece. It starts right here and it goes all the way around the top and back down to where the bumper is in the back. You've got a little curve in the front, so it's aerodynamic, curved in the back and no seams, so you don't have to worry about leaks there. You do have three vents on the top, which is really nice. And the fiberglass gives it a nice solid seating. You've got two opening vents and then the power vent in the bathroom. You can get a lot of airflow through those vents. Let's take a look right here. Now, these uh, magnetic catches are always so handy. It just flips right up, stays out of your way. And this is the access to the other side of the pass-through. And this is where you would fill that 27 gallon fresh water tank that's under the bed. And stepping back here, your sewer connections are right underneath with the gray and the black tank. Each tank is 33 gallons. You're, what you're seeing in front of the tire is the power bank we're using to power this trailer because we are obviously kind of out in a field and we are not right next to a campsite or a plug-in. You do have a black tank flush, which is really nice right here. And right next to that, of course, the 30 amp plug that's gonna connect you to the campsite or to your house if you needed shore power. Now in the back, water heater, remember on this one, it's gas and electric, that is an option, and cable or satellite connections right there. City water connection, so if you wanna run water straight from the hydrant to the faucet, just connect right here, no need to fill the tank. And then right behind that is a spray port. There is a coiled hose with a sprayer on it that hooks right here. And that's super nice for washing the dog, rinsing off at the beach before you go inside, all kinds of great things. Nice bumper in the back. The sewer hose usually fits right in here if you wanna store it there. And you are pre-wired for a backup camera if you wanted to use that. Now let's come around to this side because I wanna talk just a bit about setting up your outdoors living space. They do a nice thing on these vintage cruisers, and that is under the awning, you have the electric plug right here, cable connection right here if you're at a campsite, and this bracket is for the TV. 
the mount that you saw just inside the door will lift off and hang right here, or you could move it to the back. So if you only wanted to have one TV, it can easily move from that front location to the bedroom location to the outside location. The brackets are the same and you just lift it off, slide it right in the V and you're ready to go. I just think that is a great feature built in. Who needs to carry three TVs in a trailer this size? Thanks for watching. I know we have some things that maybe we didn't cover in this, so be sure to ask us questions. We're here to help you. I'm PJ from Princess Craft RV. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.